Under smiling skies and before an audience of more than 12,000 people, the monument at Montfaucon, France, commemorating the great Lizargon offensive of the American First Army, was dedicated on August 1st, 1937. The ceremony of an international character was participated in by the presidents of France and the United States and Generals Peyton and Pershing, the wartime commanders of the French and American armies. The five special trains which carried Americans from Paris were filled to overflowing and the greatest traffic since the war at the shell-torn ruins of Bonfaucon was handled in perfect shape. Not forgetting the sacrifices of the French comrades of the American soldiers, the official delegation of the United States laid a wreath on the city monument at Verdun before going to Montfaucon. It was a great day for General Pershing in his dual role as Commander-in-Chief of the AEF and as Chairman of the American Battle Monuments Commission. The President of France, Ambassador Bullock, General Pershing, members of the French Cabinet and other distinguished guests arrived. <laughs> Ceremony opens with services by three American chaplains, ex-service men who represent the Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish religions. Rabbi Aronson is speaking. Amen. These scenes of battle and desolation upon this land whose beauty still haunts my soul. We stand before thee in humility and awe. Who can say what is thou? What mortal man can perceive the majesty of thy justice and the wisdom of thy will. <laughs> Mr. Harry W. Palmery, the National Commander of the American Legion and a member of the official American delegation, speaks as a representative of all American veterans. Twenty years ago, more than two million American citizens, submerging every thought of selfish interest, left their homeland and joined their friends and allies on the field of honor in defense of a noble principle. Today we assemble together to dedicate the first of a group of memorials which the people of the United States of America have erected as an expression of gratitude for their victories, to preserve their spirit of service as an inspiration for future generations, and to commemorate the gallantry of those who laid the priceless spark of life upon the altar of sacrifice. Ambassador Bullock, the American ambassador to France, delivers the introductory address a year ago, I fitted Yorktown before the monument 
which marks the field where French soldiers gave their lives for our independence. An unbroken chain of friendship stretches from that monument at Yorktown to this monument at Montfaucon. Those French soldiers still live in the hearts of Americans as these American soldiers buried close to us here will live in the heart of the French. Americans and Frenchmen have marched together in two wars and in both have marched to victory. The dedicatory address is delivered by General John J. Pershing, at the conclusion of which the monument is unveiled. The President of the Republic, President Roosevelt, Monsieur le Maréchal, Mr. Ambassador, Monsieur le Ministre, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and comrades, French and American. It is difficult for our people at home to picture to themselves what took place upon the now smiling hillsides that surround this monument. 1,200,000 American soldiers were the actors on in the tragedy. They suffered as only those who have been through that war can realize. Most of them had been hurriedly equipped and only partially trained when they were rushed across the sea and put into battle against a veteran army. They fought with a dash that surprised both friend and foe and displayed the courage of seasoned troops. In the thousand individual combats which the broken nature of the terrain exacted, they proved themselves cool and resourceful, the highest praise that can be given can be bestowed upon them is the hope that America will continue to raise such sons. We can pray. We pray. We can pray. We Marshal Pétain, the great French war leader, who commanded Verdun during the severe French fighting there, pays homage to the achievements of the American army. Il fallait temporiser et limiter son action à contrecarrer les efforts ennemis jusqu'au moment où l'arrivée des armées américaines, changeant le rapport des forces au profit des alliés, nous permit à ceux-ci de passer à l'offensive. In an inspiring speech transmitted perfectly more than 3,000 miles, President Roosevelt honors the American war heroes and pleads earnestly for international peace. Though the seas divide us, the people of France and the people of the United States find unity today. Common devotion to the ideal which the memorial of Marco Corn symbolizes. That ideal to which both nations bear faithful witness is freedom under democracy. Liberty attained by government founded in democratic institutions. In a real sense, 
This monument, we have read on the French Hill side the commemoration history of our first army and the murder of our gun offenses, symbolizes that devotion. Today, we reaffirm our faith in the democratic ideal. It was in defense of that ideal that we entered the Great War 20 years ago. In the murder of our gun, we fought as champions of the rights of mankind. Neither France nor the United States sought or seek conquest. Neither had nor has imperial design. Both desire to live at peace with all nations. With a voice full of emotion, the President of France expresses the gratitude of his country for America's World War help. À dresser et rasser les frères d'armes des Américains, Thomas Fervent et l'armée française. Maitline, une dernière fois, devant ce monument, pressé sur une parcelle de terre française, devenue maintenant américaine, à travers les siècles, à tête ici. Nos populations l'entoureront toujours de leur plus pieuse attitude. Color guards of the American Legion and veterans of foreign wars were in attendance, and our national colors seen alongside the flags of the French war veterans was an inspiring sight. The ceremony concludes with the parade by the 151st French Infantry Regiment, which passes in review before the distinguished guests.